What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's basically one big long ramble about my team. On the thumbnail, it's going to say transfer plans. The title is probably going to be something about rambling about my team. It's basically 25 minutes straight, no chapters, no cuts or anything like that, all done in one take, talking about what moves I'm thinking about making this week, which cheap defenders to bring in, and then what that means for future moves around Saka, possibly Isaac. I'm going to talk about all this stuff again in the team selection video next Thursday, but in a more structured way. So if you don't want to watch this one, that's absolutely fine. But as we're in the international break, I thought I would go on a bit of a ramble. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. If you happen to be able to follow along on podcasts, rate five stars as well. Otherwise, let's get into it. And I did warn you, it's just a ramble for 25 minutes. So let's just start with a quick run through of how things are looking going into game week 12. So at the back, I've still got double Arsenal defence, Raya and Gabriel, who've been absolutely terrible for me since wildcard six. No clean sheets, no attack and returns and barely any save points for Raya as well. But I still back them as a top two defence in the league. The fixtures get better from this week onwards. And right now I've got zero plans to sell them anytime soon. Even if we sat here in four or five game weeks time and they haven't got a clean sheet, I'll probably just keep hold of them because eventually those clean sheets are coming and I don't really foresee any plans where I'm going to need the money by downgrading them to someone else. Something could happen over the next few weeks where I think, well, I've got to get rid of Gabriel to a 4.5 million defender to upgrade another player in my team, but I just don't see where that's going to happen. Even to the point where if I really wanted to bring Haaland back, I'm just going to have to start selling premium midfielders instead. And ultimately, over the next few weeks, Issues are going to crop up, injuries, suspensions. There's going to be other players I need to target. Taking out or, or, or spending transfers on taking out Arsenal defenders is never going to be top of my priority list. So they're going to be there for quite a while. With Pinnock, he's, he's rubbish, right? He scored two goals, to be fair. But from an FPL point of view, not great because Brentford haven't kept a clean sheet yet. But he's already in my team. There's other issues I need to deal with over the next game week or so. I'm probably going to have to play him in game weeks 12 and 13 against Everton away and Leicester at home. Now, if Brentford are ever going to get a clean sheet, those two fixtures might be it, right? Could they get one clean sheet over the next two game weeks? Possibly. I wouldn't bet too much of my own money on it, but I think I'm okay playing him for those games and just dealing with the other issues that have come up in my team. I think after game week 13... I just don't see any clean sheets for Brent. I mean, I'm sure they'll get some because that's just how football and FPL goes. But if we're looking at it and trying to predict it, I don't really see many clean sheets from game week 14 all the way down to 24, probably. Because any OK team like Southampton, they're playing away from home. Same with Palace in 23. Lots of the home games are against like Newcastle, Arsenal, City, Liverpool, the Brighton away, Chelsea away. There ain't many clean sheets there. So... As much as it's quite boring, I think over the next game week or two, maybe even the next three game weeks, I'm probably going to have to make a couple of defender transfers just to set my team for the December period and then hopefully then look to make more interest and attacking changes instead. I've also got Trent, who's injured. He's probably going to have to go. I'll talk about that in a minute. Then on the bench, it's Lewis, who could still be good value, right? I'm not completely discounting him as an FPL pick. But his minutes are going to be more limited with Walker around. The more defenders they get back fit, the worse Lewis's minutes are going to become. Because if like if Ake and Vardy are fit, then you could play Vardy or left back, Ake left centre back, someone in right centre back like a Kanji or Stones. Then you could even play a Kanji right back. It doesn't even have to be Walker, but Walker's also there as well. So I think City have got some nice fixtures over December. But how many of them am I going to know that Lewis is definitely starting? So he's not. Someone I'm looking to get rid of this week, but I think he might have to go over the next couple. And Greaves from Ipswich has been downgraded from a red flag to a yellow flag. I just don't see many clean sheets for Ipswich. He's in there because he's cheap. I guess after Man United, Forest away, Palace at home, Bournemouth at home, Wolves away. If I got really stuck and had to play him, I might do that over taking a hit for a defender. But I wouldn't want to play him in many of those games. Maybe Palace at home if Eze's still not fit by then. But you've still got the likes of Mateta to contend with. So Greaves is not really going to help me out that much either. The good news is I think my attack looks fairly strong for the next game week or two. So I'm not in a, like, Saka is someone I've got to consider. I like Izak as well. But if I can't get to them, 
it's probably not the end of the world. So the midfield is Palmer, Fernandez, Imbermo, Salah, Rogers. They've all got good fixtures this week. And then up front, it's Raul Jimenez against Wolves at home and Strand Larson against Fulham away. I've even got Solanke on the bench against City away. Now, at the moment, playing City, it might not be the worst time to do that. I think if any attack in the league is going to give them problems, it's the likes of Spurs and Liverpool. So I might even play Solanke over Strand Larson. Either way, whatever decision I make, the attack is fine. So it's defender transfers this week. And I put together these notes, this very well-produced transfer plan video notes. The big questions for me, sell Trent, if so, for who? I mean, I am going to sell Trent this week, almost certainly. And then get Saka eventually, if so, for who? They're the big questions. Now, with Trent, the news is quite positive that he could be back soon. But I think he's going to miss Southampton away, like I said yesterday. Then you've got City at home, Newcastle away. It just doesn't feel right to hold a £7 million defender when that money could be used in other ways. So I think I'm going to sell him. In terms of the shortlist of defenders that I come up with, I might go to a, another Liverpool defender. My main problem is... I'm going to have to play Pinnock already. Whichever defender I bring in for Trent, I've probably got to play the next two game weeks because Lewis has um, Spurs at home, Liverpool, where I just don't see a clean sheet there. And obviously Greaves, like I said, it's Man United at home, uh, Forest away. It's not great. So whichever defender I bring in for Trent probably has to stay, oh, sorry, has to be played for the next two weeks minimum. And obviously if I bring in a Liverpool defender, I'm getting them for City at home in 13. Maybe with the fixtures they've got to come after that, I should just accept that. But it doesn't feel great to use a transfer knowing that you're going to have to play them against Man City because despite how they're playing at the moment, they will continue to score plenty of goals. So I'm in two minds. But I was prepared to hold Trent the whole way through because I think long-term Liverpool's fixtures are really good. I don't know if I'm prepared to spend just 0 0.7 million less getting Van Dijk when I know Trent's not that much more. And I appreciate that Van Dijk's absolutely nailed. Trent's injured. I can't go and... Oh, sorry, I can't keep him at the moment. But I don't, know, I don't feel... It doesn't feel right to spend 6.3 on Van Dijk for this run. Um, I don't know. I look at 15, 16 onwards. I think there's plenty of clean sheets coming for Liverpool. I just don't think I can spend that much money. So I might go to Canate. I'm struggling with him a little bit. Like, I know he's first choice. And I'm not arguing that whatsoever. It's very clear to everybody that he's the first choice centre-back alongside... Van Dijk and he has proven his fitness quite a bit this year by playing Premier League then Champions League then Premier League etc so he is going to continue to get good minutes if he can stay fit and that's the thing I can't quite get behind is do I trust his injuries now moving forward because if he stays fit for this run I think he's an absolute bargain even though he hasn't got a huge amount of goal threat they will get plenty of clean sheets along this run I, I've just got in my mind, if I spend 5.3 on Canate, I could just go down to a 4.5 and free up another 0 0.8 million and just go all in on my attack instead. So I, I will consider Liverpool players and I won't completely rule them out, but I, I don't see me going there. With Man United defenders, I probably am just going to rule them out. Um, we're not quite sure how Amarim's going to set up, who he's going to prefer. And I think because Man United defenders are around 5 million or less, you could just put them in for Ipswich, Everton, you know, bench for Arsenal, play against Forest, bench against City, play against Bournemouth, etc. But I don't know if I want to take that risk when I don't quite know what Man United will look like moving forward. So I'm probably just going to go without Man United defenders. On the rest of the list, I've basically got Aston Villa, Brighton, Chelsea, Newcastle, or Ain't Nuri from Wolves. Part of me thinks just get Ain't Nuri. Like, it's Fulham away this week, and I have got Jimenez. But he's playable in any fixture because of how attacking he is. And even though he's 4.7, I kind of still just want to get him in. But I know part of my thinking of getting him in is really for these Ipswich and Leicester fixtures, which aren't until 16 or 17. And then after that, again, I just think they go back to not getting many clean sheets and it's going to be more difficult to get attacking returns as well. It just feels, it doesn't feel nice to spend 4.7 when everyone else has spent 4.4 or 4.5 and they had him for that Southampton game which is the best fixture until game week 16. So I I don't know. There's part of me that thinks I'll sit here after Christmas saying, why why did I not just bring in Aitnuri? Of course he was going to go and get four goals in six game weeks. But there's part of me that thinks he's not going to get any clean sheets along the way. So I'm not sure about him. I think with Aston Villa, I quite like their options. 
I don't think I can go for Luca Dean no matter how many starts he gets because you know at some point Matson's going to play instead. We've been here before with Luca Dean. He is a frustrating player to own. And also, because of the state of my defense, so Pinnock, I don't ever really want to play unless I absolutely have to. Lewis, I'm not sure about his minutes. Trent's obviously injured. Gabriel's the only player I'm confident playing every week. And so whoever I bring in, I just don't need another headache around starts. And I think with some of these midweek fixtures, we might see Matson play instead of Luca Dean. Luca Dean's quite nice because the attacking numbers are good, and he does often get subbed early, which means you've got potential to lock in that clean sheet. But I just don't think I can take that risk. Also, it's Chelsea away in 13, remembering that I want to play this player that I'm bringing in, ideally in both weeks. And even Brentford at home in 14 is not terrible, but I might still have him Burmo then, which just feels wrong. The Southampton at home and Palace at home in 12 and 15 is quite nice. So Newcastle defence, uh, sorry, Villa defence definitely there. I think with Lewis Hall, I'm very tempted to get him, even though he's gone up to 4.4, because I think he can be attacking. I think Newcastle got some really nice fixtures coming up. So West Ham at home, Palace away next two, Leicester at home in 16, Ipswich away in 17. My main issue with Lewis Hall is minutes. Like right now, we can definitely turn around and say he's nailed at the moment. Like you look at... Um, since game week four, there's only one game he hasn't started, and he's played 88 to 90 minutes for the last six game weeks. So right now, I would definitely say he's first choice left back, and he looks pretty nailed. But he's not Van Dyke levels of nailed, and there's still a little bit of doubt. And again, I come back to that point of I'm going to have to spend a couple of transfers on defenders over the next few weeks. If I bring in Hall, and then he, he gets benched for one game, suddenly that puts you in a position where you're never sure each week when he's going to play, and then you potentially got the the issue of another defender transfer. I, I just don't need that in my life. I don't need to spend December moving around 4.5 million defenders. So I think if you've already got a, a defense that looks great, then of course, bring in Lewis Hall, right? Don't worry about the, the very slight rotation risk. And I would say it's slight, because Burns playing the centre-back, and, and uh, Lewis is... Uh, sorry, Kelly is... Um, not playing that much at all. So I think it is a slight risk, but I just don't think I can do it. So I think for me, it's probably Colwell, Ain't Nuri, or a Brighton defender. Now, bringing in a Brighton defender for Bournemouth away does not sound great. Um, but after that, the fixtures are really good. And again, this is going to be like a long-term move. So you've got Southampton at home in 13, then Fulham away, Leicester away, Palace at home, West Ham away, Brentford at home. I'd happily... If I had to play a Brighton defender in all of those games. And for me, that's quite nice. It's the same reason I like Colwell. You can basically just put him in and play him nearly every game over December. Am I expecting massive returns from these 4.5 million defenders? No. But I'm not getting massive returns from any of the more expensive ones either. Van Heck's um, fit at the moment. Dunk's a bit cheaper. If Dunk's fully fit for 12, I might consider him. But I think right now the smart play would be to get Van Heck. So him or Colwell is probably where I'm going to go. And once I do that for. Trent out, that then gives me, let me just find Van Heck here, that then gives me 4.2 million to spend. Now, this is where the next decision comes in. That is a lot of money to have sitting in your bank that's not doing anything for you. It doesn't always work out to be the case, but generally, the more expensive a player is, the more points they're going to return. So to have 4.2 in the bank, I don't like. Now, there's a few things I could do with it straight away. Like, I could take a hit and bring Saka in. But I'd have to sell Fernandez before Ipswich away or in Burma before Everton away. Also remembering that in Burma has Leicester at home in 13. I don't like either of those options. So I could, even though I've just brought him in, take out Strand Larson and put in someone like Izak instead, which would be quite nice. I'd then have Solanke and Izak up front, which is a little bit different. I think most people will only have one or none, uh, sorry, one or neither of those players. And that would still leave me 1.4 in the bank for a rainy day, for another move later on. So I don't mind that. The problem is it pretty much locks me out of Saka. Because even if I wanted to do Fernandez out, I'd only have 9.7 to spend. So I'd have to make another move to free up the money to get Saka. That's just too many transfers for one player. So I probably wouldn't do that. So if I get Izak, it blocks off the Saka route, which is not ideal. But also, Isaac against West Ham at home is a great fixture. And if he plays all the matches that Newcastle have got coming up, there's a lot of returns for him. And I think it's quite possible that he will start all these games, like the next six games, if he can stay fit. So that's a little bit of a tempter. 
Otherwise, I just keep the money in the bank for one week and then look to kind of, you know, use it in game week 13. I think basically I don't want to have that much money in the bank for like two or three game weeks. It's just too long without it being spent. So the other option could be, and I haven't taken a hit all season, but Trent to Van Heck in game week 12, and then in 13, take a hit for Solanke out to Jao Pedro. So just put him in here. And then that would give me 6.4 million to spend. And that is enough to do Rogers up to Saka. So that would basically give me a structure of double Arsenal defense playing every week, then Van Heck and Pinnock for the next two weeks. And then in game week 14, I'd have to make a defender transfer. And it would give me a front line of basically the three cheapest playing forwards. Jao Pedro, Raul Jimenez, and Strand Larson, but a midfield of Fernandez, Salah, Palmer, and Bermo, and Saka. And that looks pretty strong. Yes, I'm going to have a benching decision every week, but Raul Jimenez has got um, Arsenal at home in 15, Liverpool away in 16. They're easy uh, times to bench him. Strand Larson's always going to probably be the, la sorry, the player out of those three forwards that I bench most weeks. That's fine. I can just use him when I, when I need him. And it means I get to keep in Burma and Fernandez for a little bit longer. I think on these two players, Fernandez and Burma, they have got some trickier fixtures coming up. But I don't really... There's no one else right now that I think I've got to bring in instead for those two midfield spots. Like Semenyo, Smith Rowe, great options for, for you know not much money. And they could be used to make upgrades elsewhere. But I've also got to be conscious about the amount of transfers I'm planning on using. Like, would I prefer in a few weeks' time... In Burma and Strand Larson, or like, I don't know, Izak and Semenyo, if the money worked. Of course, I'd prefer Izak and Semenyo, probably, but that's another two transfers. Um, and I just think that Brentford will still score goals over this run. Like, I, I don't view Villa away, Newcastle at home as completely terrible fixtures for Burma. Forest at home in 17. Brighton away, okay, is, is tricky ish. And Arsenal at home is definitely difficult. But then you've got Southampton away in 20. Bearing in mind that over Christmas, right, we, we like players that are going to play every game. We're not worried about rotation and stuff like that. And Burmo kind of offers that to you. So that's one option. Take my first hit of the season and then maybe in game week 14 make another defender move. If I get to game week 14, by the way, with Lewis still in my team, he's got Forrest at home. So if he gets benched against Liverpool, that Forrest at home game is midweek. There is a chance that he would then come back in. So I might be able to just roll a transfer in 14 if I get really lucky. The other option, uh, just to quickly go through that, would be Trent out for that cheap defender. So we'll just put um, Van Heck in again. Don't make a transfer in 13. Just play Solanke because he's got Fulham at home. And then just use the money to upgrade in Burmo to Saka or Fernandez to Saka and just keep this structure and keep Solanke up front. Like that also works as well. Like if I run it through the my team tool on Fantasy Football Hub, so we'll make that uh, Trent transfer. I'm just going to put in Van Heck again. Um, make that transfer. Then if I go to game week 13, so Strand Larson would probably come in instead of Raul Jimenez. Pinnock would play instead of Lewis. So this is what my team would look like in 13 if I just make that one swap for Trent in 12. Raya and Gabriel against West Ham away. Uh, Pinnock against Leicester at home and Van Heck against Southampton at home. My midfield would be Salah against City at home, Palmer against Villa at home, Fernandez against Everton at home, and in Burma against Leicester at home. So again, not having Saka when everyone else will have him for game week 13 is not great, but he's got West Ham away versus Fernandez and in Burma with Everton at home and Leicester at home. I think that's fine. There's no pressure for me to get Saka that week, apart from the fact his price might go up. And I've just realized I would play Raul Jimenez instead of Rodgers because Rodgers got Chelsea away. So my front line would be Jimenez against Spurs away, Strand Larson against Bournemouth at home, and Solanke against Fulham at home. It's going to be difficult to get to that week and take a hit. I've got to be honest. Like taking Solanke out for a minus four before Fulham at home doesn't sit right. So I could even just roll the transfer for two weeks and have 4.2 million in the bank and then decide what to do with 14 onwards. Like I might get to that point and decide that, okay, and Burmo's not going to be that great over this run. That's when I get saccharin and i just keep fernandez even though he's got arsenal away which is not great but i do think it'll be a nice option over over the long term so again the team would look pretty good for game week 14 um but it's, it's not allowing me to make a defender transfer that's the only thing but then if lewis plays he's probably fine 
So that, that's that's kind of that like I said this video would be a bit of a ramble. That's kind of my thoughts for game week twelve. I've got to get rid of Trent. I think he's going, right? There's there's no debate around that. I think the flexibility of having four million in the bank is nice. It's just about which cheap defender I go for. I think it's gonna be Colwell or Van Heck right now. Maybe ain't Nuri. And then it's about whether I get Saka in or do I just go for Ezak this week and spend that Trent money? And if I don't get Ezak, how quickly do I get Saka afterwards? I'm very tempted by that by that structure with Jao Pedro up front. Because I think if he keeps getting minutes, which I think he will, he's such a good value pick. And it lets you get Saka in place of Rogers. Like that just looks so strong going over Christmas. But it does put you three transfers away from Haaland. Like even if Palmer was to get injured, I need to sell him, one of my forwards, and another player to fund the move. I just don't want. I don't know if I want to leave myself in that position. But I don't know when I'm really planning on getting Haaland back. I, I, I don't. I, I honestly, I'm not sure if I'm going to get Haaland back at all. Now, let me just clarify that things can change. Okay, if premium midfielders start doing really badly or they get injured, then of course I'm willing to shift the funds around. Um, and get him back but it is a few transfers and obviously it would involve redistributing the money again and i think for city their best run coming up is probably 18 to 22 in that run they've got everton at home leicester away west ham at home brentford away and ipswich away you could captain harlan in every single one of those game weeks but straight away afterwards it's chelsea at home arsenal away newcastle at home liverpool at home Spurs away. That's going to be more difficult. So I'm looking at this run now thinking between 12 and 17, I'm fine with going against him. There's going to be weeks where he gets a brace or a hat-trick and my premium midfield is blank. But I'm hopeful that between 12 and 17, the money I've got spent in other positions will be stronger than just having Haaland. So I'm not worried about that. And people keep saying to me, what are you going to do when Haaland gets a brace or a hat-trick? Well, I'm simply just going to not bring him in. Right? I'm not stupid. I know that he can do that. I'm just willing to take that bet that overall it's better to not have him. 18 to 22 is a lot more difficult. But once you're through that, you're kind of looking good again. And if we go to those fixtures, I've said this before, in game week 18 when Haaland's got Everton at home, which by the way is the early kickoff on Boxing Day. People hate early kickoffs apparently. Um, Salah's got Leicester at home. In game week 19 when, again... Oh, it's the first kickoff on, on the Sunday, but that's, that's 2.30. Anyway, when Haaland's got Leicester away in 19, um, Palmer's got Ipswich away, so that's fine. I think 20 to 22 gets a bit trickier. So when Haaland's got West Ham at home, which right now looks like a great fixture, might not be by January, but we'll have to wait and see. Salah's against Liverpool. Uh, sorry, Salah's against Man United, although he always does well against Man United. Palmer's away to Palace. And if I've got Saka at that point, he's away to Brighton. So it's not completely awful to have to captain one of those players but i think it's pretty clear in 20 that harlan's better i think in 18 and 19 it's a bit closer in 21 harlan's got brentford away palmer's at home to bournemouth that's probably fine um arsenal are against spurs and salah's got forest away so palmer's quite competitive in 21 and then 22 when harlan's got ipswich away salah's away to brentford uh palmer is home to wolves which probably is not that bad and then Saka's at home to Villa. So that week, again, I would say that Haaland's probably the standout. So 22 and 20 could be really painful without Haaland. But once you get to 23 and Haaland's fixtures get a bit tougher again, like Salah's got Ipswich at home. So <laughs> it's very easy to say right now, I'm just not going to get Haaland before game week 18. And then game week 18, I'm just going to go without him and risk it. I might not want to do that by the time it comes. but I also think there's absolutely a an okay sorry I think it's absolutely reasonable to just not get him and just keep the same structure I've got right now as long as those premium midfielders stay fit and if they don't then we have another conversation about it um yeah I don't know I think sometimes people just act as though when you plan to not get hard it means you can never get him back but of course you can you can just change your mind right you're allowed to do that in FPL but I think it is possible we can get through this Christmas period without him. And then once we come through the other side, January onwards, it might not look so bad again. But then, who knows? The mystery chip might come out, and that might mean that I really want Haaland. 
he might be in incredible form and Liverpool might have a bunch of injuries. You just don't know. But I think the idea of worrying about it now, it's just, it's just no point. Um, if he scores a hat-trick against Spurs, in game week 13, I'll just make my Saka move and my defender transfer and I'll just go without him again because I think captaincy from the other midfielders will just stand up to him. Anyway, I think that's it for this uh, well-produced transfer plans video. I haven't really got anything else to say, I don't think. I think I think that's basically it for me. Sell Trent. Do I get Saka? I think I really want... I mean, it's worth saying that Saka's not even necessarily fit and available. Like, if we find out that he's out for 12, and then maybe a doubt for 13, well, all of a sudden, game week 14 is a midweek fixture. So, I mean, he'd probably be back by then. He'd probably be back by 12. If we did, If he was a doubt for 13... I think I would just take the hit and get Isaac and just go without Saka for a little while. Because the thing for me with Saka, just to quickly finish here, there's no weeks where I think he's an amazing captain. Even 18, right? Ipswich at home is great. That's the week that Salah's got Leicester at home. So there's no fixtures here where I feel like I would captain him ahead of Salah or Palmer. So that's why I keep saying there's no pressure to get Saka. He's a great option, right? Brilliant option. Don't get me wrong. If you've already got him, you're in a great place. But I don't feel a massive... Like, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel to me like he's essential to buy, I guess. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I've clicked the wrong button there. <laughs> That's the type of morning it is. I'm basically going to do Trent to a cheap defender this week and have $4 million in the bank and probably not get Isaac. But who knows? That money might be useful in a few weeks. If you've enjoyed that video and somehow watched the whole thing, even though I've done it in one take without hardly any notes and thought about what I'm going to say, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button. If you've happened to follow, uh, follow along, on podcast rate five stars as well if you want to check out the my team tour on fantasy football hub and all the other tools they've got there is a link in the description below 30 percent off at the moment and a seven day free trial i will be back probably tuesday now next week i don't know if there'll be anything in between but who knows i might think of something else to ramble on about before then and just do that as well enjoy the rest of the international break enjoy england winning on thursday and i'll catch you again soon <laughs>